Welcome back fellow budgeters and welcome if you're new to my channel. My name is Jessie and this is Jessie Budgets. Today I'm going to be going over my January clothes. I do use two different notebooks to keep track of my spending and my budgeting. Um, the first is my Erin Condra notebook. Um, this is where I track all my paycheck budgets. And then in my Happy Planner, this is where I track all my spending. Um, so I'm going to be going over both of these today um, in detail. But first we're going to start with my Erin Condra because this is where like I said, I do my paycheck budgeting, so I'm going to show um, my closeout for paycheck number three and then my overall for um, January in total. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is my paycheck number three breakdown. Um, my paycheck actually came out to less than what I expected, and that's because I completely forgot that I didn't work a full 80 hours these past two weeks. Um, I actually took a half day one of the days and so that's why it's less um so i came out to 2506.68 i did have 14.52 of rollover so the overall total came out to 25.21.20 um so i did have to move some stuff around this paycheck and i'll explain that in a little bit um but let's go ahead and start with the bills and fixed expenses so i did reserve the second half of my rent 375 my phone bill did come out and that came out to 195.38 um, and if you're new to my channel, this is not only for my phone bill, but I also pay for my mom and my sister. So this is for a total of three phone lines. Um, so that's why it's so high. Um, pg &E also came out and that came out to 108.20. And then you guys, you guys, my credit card is finally paid off. Um, between my savings challenges and my magic paycheck this month, um, and now this, I was able to pay off my American Express 100%. It is now at zero and it's going to stay that way. Um, I've decided not to close the credit card though because one, I heard that's bad for your credit. But two, I, I think I might have this linked up to a couple of different things. So just for, you know, just... I want to make sure like a bill doesn't accidentally get, you know, charged onto this card and then, you know, I don't pay it because <laughs> I want to say, I think the fast track is tied to my American Express. I gotta, I gotta look into that and start moving stuff out of it because I just, I don't even want to deal with it. Um, but yes, anyways, I was able to pay it off. So yay for me. So exciting. So exciting. Um, and then I did have to reserve 375 um, for rollover next month. Um, so I the next paycheck that I'm getting because this one was so late in the month is actually not until Valentine's Day. So the rollover is going to account for the couple of the bills that I have before my first paycheck in February hits. Um, so that totals $375. So I had to make sure that that stayed in my account. So all of this adds up to $1376 for any. And now if we go into cash and savings, um, I did take out my 125 as typical, 50 for gas, 125 for groceries, and then 100 for personal. Now, and this is where I had to move some stuff around because um, if you look at my budget before, it was going to be, well, I already knew it wasn't going to be this high because that's way more than my paycheck is typically. Even if I didn't, hadn't missed like half a day, it still wouldn't have been 2600 um, so I knew I was going to have to move some stuff around and I know I previously had said I was probably going to take it from the sinking funds or savings. But when I looked at how much I had saved towards my Roth IRA, I felt like this was probably the best place to, I guess, deduct from um, because I was able to put so much for my paycheck number two. Because this was a magic month, um, I did, you know, was I was able to contribute more. So I didn't feel as guilty to take some of this away from my Roth IRA. So for the paycheck number three, I only put in $200 versus the $271 that I originally wanted to put in. And, and I'm okay with that because I can always make that up later. And honestly, now I'm like one, I guess, installment ahead because of my magic month. So I'm okay with that. I still put $200 towards my sinking funds and $300 towards my savings. Um, so all of that, I didn't have any sinking fund purchases for this paycheck and then also no one budgeted. So yay, again, that's a win. Um, and all of that came out to $1,100. So if we move down to here, again, my income did come out to $25,21.20. My bills and expenses, $13,76.40 and $1,100 for my cash and savings. So that gives me a total of $44.80 to roll over, which is technically a lie because it's $44.80 plus a $375. Um, because again, that's my cushion for next month. Um, my retirement was also pulled as well for my 
paycheck, um, 9434 for my 401k, and then 47170 for my Roth 401k. So all of that came out to 56604. So now I'm going to flip this over to the front because now we're going to just do the whole January closeout, which is going to go a lot quick, quicker um, because I've kind of already given you the spiel of uh, my entire breakdown. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the overview for January. We'll go ahead and get started with the income first. Um, so my first two paychecks came out to exactly the same at 253016. This last one, like you saw, came out to a little bit less, 250668. I did have a rollover from December of 297 and then um, other, which is really just sinking funds, 400 or uh, yeah, sinking funds and target, $405.29. So overall that came out to 8,269.29. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is not typical income. Again, it's this high because of the magic month. I was able to get three paychecks this month, um, typically only get two. Um, wish it was this high every month that'd be great um but no um but yeah so let's go ahead and go over rent uh bills and fixed expenses so my rent came out to 750 car insurance 124.80 american express this is how much i was able to put towards my american express this month you guys one thousand one hundred and ninety seven dollars and eighty two cents mind-blowing holy smokes um so yeah again 100 percent paid off i'm done and over with um, student loan, I was able to put $500, you guys, um, making a dent there. I did not have water and garbage this month, but this will um, I will have to pay for this in February. My target came out to $153.29. Um, my U.S. bank, I was able to put $550, you guys, towards my U.S. bank credit card. I'm really, really, really happy about that because this is the next one I will be tackling. Um, and then my phone bill, like you guys saw, was in 195.38, and then PG&E 108.20. So overall, um, was $3,579.49. Oh, um, okay, so now to my cash and savings. Um, I did reserve $375 for my eating out, um, $200 for gas, $375 for groceries, $300 for personal, and I was able to contribute $1,013 to my Roth IRA um, in January. Like, to me, that is such a good, like, holy smokes, I'm starting off with the bang to try to max out my Roth IRA. Um, I already have $1,000 of it reserved. That's amazing. You guys, I was also able to save over $1,000 this month, too. Like, and that's what I'm telling you, I wish I had three paychecks every month because I could do a lot with that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was able to save $1,100. My goal was $900, but I was able to save more than that. Um, and then my sinking funds was actually a little bit less. I was aiming for $600, but I only contributed $575, and I'm okay with that. Like I've always said, sinking funds to me, is it's great if I can, but it's also okay if I can't. Like, they're not really necessities to me. It's great that I can want to save up for them, you know, for certain things. Um, but at the end of the day, if I need to cut that spending, I need to cut that spending. Um, and then I had a total of 332 worth of um, sinking fund purchases. Um, so my overall total here came up to $4,270. Oh my goodness. And I just noticed I forgot to write my income down here. Um, okay, so that was eight, two, six, nine, twenty nine. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So my income came out to eight thousand two hundred and sixty nine twenty nine. Um, my bills and expensive thirty five seventy nine forty nine, and then forty two seventy um, for my cash and savings. So my rollover is four nineteen eighty, which is which matches what my paycheck number three balance. So can't ask for anything more. <laughs> and you guys, look at this. Like I'm shocked how much I was able to save in my retirement too. In addition to already the 1013, um, my work pulled out a total of 1698.12. So I feel like I'm finally catching up to where I should be for my retirement. I started really late in the game. Um, I know I don't sound older, but trust me, I'm, let's just say I'm over 30. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
I started really late in the game, so I'm trying to play catch up, and that's why I'm aggressively saving towards my Roth IRA, and then also contributing higher amounts for my um, what they pull out or deduct from my paycheck. So, anyways, let's go to let's head over now to the Happy Planner, so I can kind of break down everything that's been happening there, and that should go fairly quickly. Um, I'm trying not to make this video that long, but I also want to be thorough as well. So, yeah, I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so, in my Happy Planner, there are a couple of things that I do want to keep track of. Um, first and foremost is my playlist challenge. Um, now this I, idea I stole from Alyssa from Budget Stuff Save Repeat. Um, she's having a pay ah, playlist challenge going on, but I think she's actually following the rules of whatever, like, where it came from. Me, I'm just kind of like adapting it to my own rules. <laughs> and that's essentially just copying the name and literally just pe playing people's playlists that I want to play. Um, there's no rhyme and reason to it. These are just people that I want to help their playlist um and if you guys want me to help you if you have a, um, a youtube channel and you want me to help you with your playlist just let me know in the comments below and i'll be more than happy to add you i actually already have a couple of people onto my um february playlist um that i've notated but you know again i have a lot of slots and so and i do work from home at least twice a week so yeah um, anyways, so these are the people or the channels that I've watched this month. Um, some of them have two dots and some of them have one. Um, and that's because for the ones that have two, I've watched at least two of their playlists and the ones that have one, I've only gotten to one playlist. Um, but for me, that's just my own way of keeping track because I really want to at least play two of their playlists. So if there's not two dots on there, I'm going to go back and watch another one later. Anyways. Um, another thing that I want to keep track of is also my watch hours and my subscriber count. I'm not going to put too much emphasis on these two. I just want to track for my own knowledge um, and just to see my own progress. Um, but if I do hit those milestones, that's great. If I don't, that's okay too. I just want to kind of see where I start and end towards the month. Um, and to me, I don't know. I don't know about you guys or any of my fellow YouTubers, but the sub count, I just hate looking at it, honestly, because... I don't know what's going on with the YouTube algorithm or, or whatever the case is, but you'll have a certain count one day and then it'll drop and then it'll go back up. It's just so inconsistent. Anyways, I did end with 567. So I just want to say a huge thank you for those who have subscribed to my channel and continue to encourage me and just watch my videos. And even if you're just a silent watcher, just thank you for being here. Um, it just really does mean a lot and it does give me like the encouragement and the push to keep um, just consistent. But anywho, um, let's move over to my rewards as well. That's another thing that I really want to keep track of this year. Um, so I do use several platforms to um, get rewards back. Um, so I'm just going to go over them here. And then you can find actually all of my um, shameless plug though right now. <laughs> you can find all of my codes and stuff like that down in my description box. Um, for all of these different uh, platforms. So the first one I use, which I know no one is new to anymore, and if you are, um, I, I can explain them just really briefly, is the Fetch Rewards. Um, that's just an app that you can download on your phone, and then you just take a picture of your receipt, upload it, and then they'll give you points. Um, and it's really nice because the app will actually look through its own, I guess, bonus rewards, for you so you don't have to go searching um so in case you buy something that has extra points to it they'll just apply it which i think is really nice um so this one i have a beginning balance of 13,560 points um so one thing i should emphasize with this is that i'm going to try to accumulate all of these points until the end of the year because i like to use a lot of the gift cards and things like that to go towards christmas um so therefore i don't have to spend as much of my own money and you know, um, I should say essence, I guess, um, towards Christmas. So yeah, so this one I'm going to try not to touch because again, I want to try to claim some of the gift cards a little bit closer to Christmas. So right now, again, like I said, my current balance is 13,560. My U.S. bank does, uh, my credit card does give me cashback rewards. And so right now my balance is at $69.38. Shopkick. Um, this is a really easy app that I've had for quite some time. Um, 
if you guys have not heard of this app, you basically get points into from walking into certain stores. Um, so y'all know me, I go to Target like every week. <laughs> um, so I get like, I think 10 points just from walking into the store. You do have the, you do have to have the app open when you're walking into the store in order for it to register. Um, but they do have a good variety of stores where you can get points. Um, you can also get points for scanning items within the store. You by, don't, by no means have to purchase these items. You just have to scan the barcode and you can get additional points that way. Um, they also have like, um, what is it? They also have ones where you can buy stuff online through their app. For certain stores like Adidas, if you click on the link and then purchase something from that website, you kind of like Rakuten a little bit where you can get points that way as well. And then also, I think if you link your credit card to the app, um, for example, I have my, um, yeah, I have one, I think I have my US bank credit card uh, attached to this one. So when I go to Marshalls and I make a purchase through Marshalls, that also gets me points. So there's various different ways. Anyways, all to say that this one, I have 6,759 points as of my balance. Pogo is another one. This one is... Again, I link it to um, my bank account and also my credit card. So anytime I make a purchase, I get points for that. And I think this one also has like a, a locator uh, point system where if you pass a certain store that they're connected with, you also get points. Um, so this one, I have a balance of 36,421. This one has been the one that's taken me the longest to kind of accumulate any kind of points. Um, and I don't know why, but... I think it's because certain purchases are only worth so much because um, it's not dollar for dollar. Um, and then Receipt Hog, for me, it's kind of like it's trying to be like Fetch, but it's just not as good as Fetch. <laughs> but I figure, you know what? I'm already uploading these receipts to Fetch. Might as well just do them at the same time for Receipt Hog. Um, so this one, I've accumulated 3,599. Um, so yeah, this is something, again, that I just want to keep track of. Um, and again, it's kind of essentially to me free money. So yeah. Okay, now moving on. My hot mess of my transaction line. <laughs> I've also kept um, details of all of my sinking fund purchases. So this is something else that I'm trying to do this year. And then I've also kept track of my sinking funds and savings. So let's go in a little bit more detail into these. Okay, so like I mentioned, something else that I want to keep track of is my sinking funds. I want to see how much I'm contributing every month um, and kind of see where I started and see my progress from there. Um, so yeah, you'll see that this whole month I was able to save $6.55 um, towards my sinking fund. Now... I know this total is different than the one that's projected on my um, on my Erin Condren budget overview, and that's just because I'm including Target, the eighty dollars, um, into my sinking funds. Whereas in my Happy Planner, it's its own separate category. So just keep note of that. It's an eighty dollar difference, but I know I know that, so that's why I'm not really tripping off of it. But but yeah, so it's also showing how much I was able to contribute per paycheck. Um, so. That's really great. Um, and then let's flip this over. And then so here you can also see I'm keeping track of my savings as well. Uh, savings and my savings challenges. Um, and again, I, here it shows how much I've been able to contribute just to these challenges alone. And so overall is $2,113. Um, and again, I did put where I started and then where I'm, um, well, not where I'm ending, but at least what I contributed that month. month. Um, and then if you look down here, this is for my Disney World trip that I am aiming to take this year. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I do want to pre be prepared if we can do it. Um, and so this is from November and December. I wasn't able to contribute anything in January, um, but I will be able to in February um, because I have a couple of cake orders lined up. And um, again, if you're new to my channel, um, I used to be a pastry chef, um, no longer a pastry chef, but... I do um, make custom cakes on the send from time to time, and that is what will be funding my Disney World trip. Um, so yeah, let's move on. I also um, notated how much, I didn't know what else to use this page for, so really this is all I'm gonna be using, um, using it for right now. Um, but I did write down um, all of my um, variable categories such as eating out gas grocery target and sinking fund purchases because i want to know what my overall uh, spending for the month is and so i did spend 15 13. 
okay you guys and then I made this spread and this spread was um I kind of got inspiration from planning with boys if you guys have ever watched her channel um you guys will know that she loves to sticker everything up that is like totally my vibe so I was like you know what I'm gonna just use the stickers I have on hand and make it look super cute um so I did and so um my total savings for this month was $15.53 now I should have notated that on my previous page that I'm not including my savings challenges because well, I'm including some, and, but not all, because like the ones that I used, the 1000 and the 500 since I didn't get to keep that in that one towards my credit card, um, I didn't notate it as me um, saving because I didn't get to keep it, right? It went towards my credit card. So what I was able to keep <laughs> and is still in my saving accounts is 1553 and so that's really much what I have in here. Um, and then I also have my 100 envelope challenge and then the 5,000 new car challenge. And all of these three pages, I will be moving month to month um, as the year progresses. But yeah, that's pretty much what's all in my happy planner. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this budget with me. And if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. Um, and until next time, I hope you guys will all take care and be well. Bye.